today we are going to continue our high performance metaprogramming journey by looking at this. What you see in front of you is the compilation time of two different implementations of the exact same meta function. Yes, there's two of them. One is just significantly faster than the other. Let's explore together how making some minor changes in your meta programs can have such a huge effect. Of course, as always, any code discussed in the series can be found back on GitHub. There's a link in the description. The algorithm we are going to look at is the remove if algorithm. Similar to the standard remove if, which you can find in the algorithms header, this remove if goes to a list and removes any elements matching the given predicate. Of course, our remove if is a meta function, meaning that it operates on a list of types and that the predicate is a type trait or other meta function that can be evaluated during compilation. In this example, we use remove if to remove all floating point types from our input list. So let's first have a look at the naive implementation that had such horrible performance. Remove if is a template, accepting a template template parameter as a predicate. This is the function that will be invoked on each element to test whether it should be removed or not. As the second argument, it accepts a list on which to operate. We are going to write a recursive implementation where we build up the new list before returning it. To do this, we'll use a trick that we've used before when developing our metaprogram library and pass the new list as the third argument. This allows us to take it along and gradually build it up through the recursive calls. With our main template defined, let's write a partial specialization to take care of the recursive calls. Since we want to test the predicate against the first element in the list, we are going to specialize the second argument to be a type list starting with the type T0, followed by the possibly empty veridic template parameter pack. As the third argument, we again have the new list, which we are building up to become our final output. Filling in the template declaration, we get the following. The implementation of remove if is rather simple. We simply have an if statement where we check if the first element from our type list matches the predicate. I'm using the if underscore meta function, which we developed in the second episode of our series. If t0 matches the predicate, we have to remove it. Or, since we are building up this output list, we instead just don't add it to the new list when recursing. Here we have the recursive call to remove if, with the same predicate and the new list, but for the type list we omit t0. In other words, we recurse on the remainder of the list. If t0 does not match our predicate, we have the else clause. Here we need to make sure that we include t0 in our new list, we use the pushback t meta function, again from our meta program library, to make sure that t0 is included in our output list before recursing on the remaining types. This specialization will be called over and over again until it executes with the last element, makes its decision, and in the if statement then tries to recurse again with a now empty list. At this point, the specialization no longer matches, and we need a second specialization to correctly handle this last call. This specialization is used only when we are past an empty list. At that point, we know we are done with our recursion, and our new list parameter should contain the result of calling remove if on the original input. As such, we can now return new list. Since this is a meta function, that of course means that we define a member alias called type to be equal to new list. So, that's our complete implementation of the remove if meta function using all the techniques we discussed in the first six episodes of this series. For convenience, we can still add an underscore t alias, and doing so allows us to execute remove if t with std is floating point, as we saw in the example at the start. Functionally, there is nothing wrong with this implementation. It will give the correct output. It is, for metaprogramming standards, quite easy to read, and as long as you only use it with very small type lists, you'll be good to go. However, the moment you start using type lists that are just slightly bigger, you'll start to notice your compilation time starting to skyrocket. On the vertical axis, you see the compilation time in seconds with the latest stable GCC release. It is hard to see, but up till 10 types, we are dealing with less than a second of compilation time. However, as we go beyond 10 types, this quickly starts to explode, needing close to a minute for 18 types. I tried to run this implementation of remove if on 20 types, but this actually crashed my compiler as it ran out of memory. The compilation was using more than 22 gigabytes of RAM when it crashed. How can such a simple algorithm have such horrible compilation time? 
and how do you fix it? In the previous episode, we talked about the cost of the different operations a compiler does when it processes our meta functions. One of the key things we learned was that type instantiations were really expensive and should be limited to only the ones that are strictly necessary if you care about performance. So let's have a look at the number of type instantiations in our remove if implementation to see if we can explain this exponential compilation time. The declaration of our main template is just that, a declaration. Without a definition, it can't be instantiated, so we don't need to worry about this one. The specialization that acts as our terminating condition and is invoked when passed an empty list can and will be instantiated, of course. However, all it does is define a type alias, so clearly instantiating this specialization does not lead to further instantiations. And as such, it can't be responsible for the explosion in compilation time we saw from the benchmarks. The interesting part is the specialization that takes care of the recursion. Let's go through it step by step, paying particular attention to the number of types that are instantiated. In the previous episode, I explained that the cost of a type instantiation is also dependent on the number of arguments that are part of this instantiation. But for this analysis, we will ignore that and simply count the number of instantiations. As a matter of fact, let's first focus only on the number of type instantiations of the remove if template. We will just assume that the different lists that are used in these invocations, as well as the predicate and pushback calls, are all already memoized when our remove if is called. To make things a bit more concrete, I'll use an example where remove if is called with a list of int, bool, float, and char. Now, looking at the if underscore from which we inherit, we see two other mentions of remove if, one in the if and one in the else class. For both of these remove ifs, we request the type member in order to get the correct parameter for the parameter pack of our if. What this means is that in order to instantiate remove if for our list of int, pool, float, char, we need to instantiate the if from which we inherit. And to do that, we need to instantiate two more remove ifs, including their type member which leads to another round of inherited ifs and remove ifs. One for the case where we remove the int and one for the case where we keep it and hence add it to the new list. Note that this is needed just to instantiate the first remove if call. It does not matter whether the predicate matches T0 or not. If we look at the parameters of these two new instantiations, we see that they are different. As such, there will be no lookup of a memoized type and we pay full cost for these instantiations. Of course, we also have to deal with the recursion here. As to instantiate those remove ifs, we also need to instantiate the if statements from which they inherit. And to do that, we again have to instantiate even more remove ifs. Again, every instantiation has a different set of parameters, meaning that there are no lookups, and we again have to recurse further and do more type instantiations, all to resolve that very first type instantiation. Only when we have reached the final level of these recursive instantiations, where the list parameter is empty, will we have everything we need to instantiate the initial remove if call. In other words, we have an exponential number of type instantiations in the order of two to the power of n, to be precise, just for this simple remove if implementation. The problem is what is referred to as eager template instantiation. In order to instantiate remove if, we need to instantiate the type it inherits from. There's no way around that but there is something we can do to make instantiating that if cheaper. Currently, we instantiate the type member of both the remove ifs in both classes, allowing it to return the correct list. By requesting the type member, we are using what is referred to as eager template instantiation. We force the compiler to eagerly go through all the recursive instantiations to find the final type, the type list that is to be returned at that level of the recursion. Of course, we are only interested in the result of one of those two remove if calls. So why would we eagerly instantiate both of them if we only need one? This is what leads to this exponential number of instantiations. A better alternative is to use lazy instantiation. Instead of requesting the type member, we simply instantiate remove if and pass that type. As a result, in order to instantiate the if, we still need to instantiate the remove if parameters, but not the type members they contain, and hence there is no recursive instantiation. Whereas before, if returned a list, 
it now returns a meta function that can be used to compute the list. This is the difference between eager and lazy. Eager, directly returning the answer, which means completely instantiating everything, and lazy, returning a function that can be used to compute the answer. Of course, now the if returns the correct remove if, but to make sure we end up with a type alias, which is the correct list, we do need to instantiate that remove if template by requesting the type member from it. By doing this instantiation of the type member outside of the if call, we ensure that we only recurse on the remove ifs that are actually relevant to finding the final output. So instead of having two to the power of n instantiations of remove if, we end up with only a linear number of remove ifs. Let's put this new implementation, let's call it lazy remove if to the test and compare its performance with the naive implementation. I used the benchmarking techniques discussed in the previous episode and ran 200 compilations overnight. I found the lazy implementation to be a whopping 94 times faster. What's more, whereas the naive, eager implementation would crash my compiler at 20 types, this new lazy implementation can easily handle 128 types in a fraction of a second. This brings me to rule number one of high performance meta programming. Prefer lazy over eager template instantiation. Because by deferring instantiation until it is strictly necessary, we minimize the number of expensive type instantiations. In the next episodes, we will use four more implementations of the remove if algorithm to explain and demonstrate other optimization techniques. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and join me again next time on this journey to uncover more rules of high performance metaprogramming and see just how fast we can go. Also, if you want to check out the code and play around with it yourself, go to my GitHub page. There's a link in the description. Thanks for watching.